What's up you guys, my name is Ryan. Today we're talking about a photo called The Journey. Now if you're new here, we talk about some of the art that I've made, as well as I give out some tips that could help you become a better artist. This is one of my personal favorite photos. It shows my wife and I walking down a path of life, and that's a beautiful thing. But before we dive too deep into the meaning of that photo, I'd like to give you some tips that could help you become a better artist. Now the first tip that I have for you is that you focus on quality over quantity. Having lots of photos all over your house, all over your walls, and all over your floor doesn't necessarily mean that you're a good artist. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your time. I want you to make high quality art pieces that you can be proud of because when you impart a lot of meaning into them, other people are gonna be able to see that and you're gonna feel that as well. And when it's hanging up on your wall, you're gonna have so much more pride in your heart for that piece because you know you spent a lot of time on it rather than just throwing a paint bucket against a canvas and hoping for the best. No shade on those who throw paint buckets against canvas on walls, but that's not my style, and if you're watching this video, it's probably not your style either. You wanna learn how to make technical drawings with high skill and sharp lines and bold colors, then you're in the right place. So remember, what I'm telling you now is to focus on quality over quantity. You don't need a lot of art, you just need a good one. Only the good stuff gets framed and put on the wall. Tip number one, don't forget, focus on quality over quantity. Now, tip number two, make sure that you impart a lot of meaning into your drawing. Don't just go for feelings. You don't wanna make something that just makes somebody feel a certain way. That's okay, art is moving and it is subjective, but when you wanna make something like this, you need to have a story inside it, and that includes a setup, a conflict, and a resolution. Now the conflict is what's inside your photo, the setup is who you are when you start to make it, and the resolution is how your viewer feels after you explain to them what it means. So let's see if you guys take note of what conflict's going on in this photo and let me know in the comments how you feel and do you feel resolved or do you feel that the conflict in this art piece is resolved after I explain it to you. So remember, the second tip I have for you today is that you focus on meaning rather than feeling. You want your art piece to have a meaning to those who see it and also to have a meaning to you. So now that we got the tips out of the way, let's begin to break down this art piece and what it means to me and why you should care. The first thing that stands out to most people is that the piano is a walkway and there's people on it. They might be kind of hard to see, but you can definitely notice in the close up that there's a couple walking along the piano. Now, this is meant to be a depiction of my wife and I walking through life somewhere in the middle and we're enjoying it, the purple universe behind it and that just displays the uh, universal goal. Whatever your end result might be, you might start somewhere, desire to be somewhere else, and through that door is what lies beyond. If you notice, up in the sky, there's a battle taking place, and that's between the Holy Spirit and the Great Serpent, or uh, whatever you'd like to take that interpretation as. It is a battle between good and evil, truth and justice, light and dark. You know me, that's what I like to paint, so that's what's in my picture. Now, uh, take a look at the color scheme. It's similar to what I use in my space drawings. It's that blue, the orange, the yellow, the green, and it works really well, especially when I pair it with my blue monster here. He wears that face mask, he wears that skull. That just goes to represent the uh, face of death, and a lot of people are afraid of God. They're afraid of death. They're afraid to ask any questions about what comes after, but if you're like me, you know that there's nothing to worry about, that death is just the uh, beginning of the next life, and really it's gonna be something great, something special, and uh, this life is just a test, and what you really want is what comes after that, and uh, that again is kind of what's through that door, what's on the other side. Nobody truly knows, but if you know, you know. So I like to show that the uh, color wave spirals off the death mask, and uh, it actually kind of goes up into the clouds and then somewhat turns into the serpent and then comes back around and then as the serpent breathes fire, the fire becomes the tail of the monster and this represents a sort of yin and yang style of good and evil, how one cannot exist without the other and that the conflict is always raging, never resolved and I believe this is an awesome depiction of that battle, of that relationship and uh, that's one of the reasons it's one of my favorite is because it's got such a harmonious meaning behind the conflict. I want to take a little bit of time point out the moon in this drawing. It is one of the favorites that I have in all my drawings. Now, if you've seen many of my drawings, you know that I draw the moon in a lot of them. This one turned out almost perfect. It is just about the best that I could do. I love the little face. I love the craters, the shading, the texture of it. Everything just looks perfect. And so the character that belongs in this moon is just something super unique, and I really appreciate how it turned out. One of the techniques I use to avoid drawings getting too detailed or too overwhelming is to make the eyes white that draws attention but not too much attention 
You'll notice if you put pupils in your drawings, they immediately draw attention and that can be good. It also can be bad. Uh, realistic drawings are very difficult to pull off and when you try and draw something with a realistic look, people often notice something is off right away, whether it be subconsciously or actively. If you take a close look at some of the shading techniques that I've used in this drawing, that's done by layering markers on top of each other one stroke at a time until I achieve a desired effect. It shows best inside the body of the serpent as well as with the fire. It's uh, outlined in orange, outlined in red, and then colored inside with yellow. And uh, it makes a great look, it really makes it glow, it really makes it pop and have multiple layers that you wouldn't notice if you weren't just drawing. Also you can see the sun behind the cityscape is layered in a way that it's brighter at the base and gets lighter toward the edges and I think it just makes a really rich look. This is one of my favorite cityscapes. I love that the lines show through, so it makes it look like there's floors to the buildings and everything has a depth and a layer and a height. And uh, I think it looks great, especially when lit up with the sun behind it and on the bright green paint of the earth below. I think it just really pops. And then the water surrounding it, everything looks great. I don't know where you'd find round land mass like this. I don't know what city it's supposed to paint, but it's just a picture of humanity as a whole existing on the earth and I think that this captures it quite well. One of the most notable attributes of this painting, in my opinion, is the presence of the stars. Now you know me, going by trick stars, I gotta put three stars in the drawing, but another thing that I added was the addition of the textured star dots in this painting. Now they aren't just put on there with color, they're actually dripped in paint, so when you rub your hand across the painting, you can feel the texture, and it adds another layer, and it's just one more thing, when I hint to quality over quantity, that when you see this in person, when you touch it with your hands, you can actually feel that there's something really special about this piece, and that's one of the key features that contributes to that special feel. In most of my drawings, I hide the stars. This one is somewhat plain and simple, but it also has a deep meaning, and that's why it means a lot to me, but the three stars are located very obviously up in the sky and behind the pathway, and I uh, just wanted to point that out because those of you who are new, you might know that I go by trick stars and all my paintings I hide three stars in the shape of an L or a delta and uh, that's just one of my subliminal ways of tagging my art. So if it doesn't have my signature at the bottom, you see the stars, you know it's mine. And honestly, nobody's making any art that looks like this. I know there's a lot of artists out there, a lot of pop art, but this is some seriously deep stuff and it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of skill. And I'm really grateful to have the ability to make this art. And I just wanted to share that with you in hopes that you become a better artist and you guys can start to put these techniques into your drawings. I'd love to see some feedback in the future of some drawings that you guys have made using some of the tips that I've provided. I know they might not be the most conventional wisdom, they might not be the most unobvious tips uh, or extremely unique. There might be other people on YouTube that are teaching you how to paint, how to draw with a lot more technicality than I am. I've got a lot more experience with just the wisdom approach and some of the uh, expertise that I've gained is just through life approach. Um, it's not exactly uh, professionally gained knowledge. I didn't go to art school, I've just self-taught myself how to draw and paint. And then the uh, philosophical meanings that come behind is just a reflection of who I am as a person. I also wanted to draw attention to the dreamscape approach that I use with some of my portraits, some of my drawings, and that would be the clouds that border the painting. This is a good way to conserve space on your painting, as well as bring some white balance to it. I know a lot of my drawings get really colored out. My early motto was to never leave any white left on the page, but I've since gone back on that, and uh, I like to leave the cloud border around some because it really creates a dreamy feel to the drawing. A lot of people that see my artwork say that that's one of their favorite things about it is the, uh, the clouds and the way that it looks so inviting. Lastly, I just wanted to point out the tag that I use. It's my initials RAM, and that's just my uh, human ability. That's my natural gift uh, from art, and that's usually when I feel that, I tag it that way. If I'm feeling it more of a divine providence, uh, more of a divine inspiration, I'll tag it TK with the blue, and that usually represents the Holy Spirit. This one does have some good and evil undertones. It does have that presence of the divinity and of divine being, but um, as far as the meaning behind it, as far as the image itself, it really just shows some skill that I like to take credit for. So you might see a little battle going on between who gets the credit for it, but the Lord knows that I love to give him credit for all my art. But um, this one goes for me. I just really like it. It's one of my favorites, so that's why I had to put my actual name on it. So with that said, guys, I just wanted to thank you for watching the video. I really hope that you enjoyed the meaning behind this art. I hope that the tips that I gave you, you found important or meaningful to you. 
Um, just remember to always put quality over quantity and to always put meaning over feeling in your art. I think that'll really help you go farther as an artist, help you become a better artist. And um, like I said earlier, I'd love for you to send me some of your work so I could uh, take a look at it and let me know if any of my tips have helped you. And uh, I look forward to making the next video. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I post a new video. I'm trying to get better at this. This is my fifth video, give or take. Um, I'm really enjoying YouTube, and so I'm hoping to make a lot more for you. So just let me know how you think I'm doing in any ways that you think that I can improve. I really appreciate you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.